Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2018 American action thriller film called How It Ends. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. In Seattle, Samantha is with her husband, Will, having a scan for her baby boy. Outside, they discuss how tonight he is going to ask her father for permission to marry her. They kiss before he leaves for the airport. He has a meeting in Chicago and then heads to a hotel where he goes to meet Samantha's parents. He shares a whiskey with their father, Tom, but the atmosphere is very tense. At dinner, Tom tells Will that he hears that they are thinking of buying a place together. He wants assurance that if they split up, Will will not try to claim any money that they put forward to help their daughter. Tom is quite aggressive towards Will, even though Samantha's mother, Paula, tries to calm the situation. He leaves before a fight develops. The next morning, Samantha calls Will and wakes him up. He is still fully clothed from the night before. He realizes that he is late for his flight. She says that her mother called her and he says that he never got a chance to ask them for permission to marry. Suddenly, there is interference on the call. Samantha says that there is something wrong and she's scared before the call drops. He is unable to call her back so he leaves for the airport. He finds that his flight has been delayed and then all flights are canceled. On the news, there are reports of huge seismic events off the Southern California coast and that they have lost contact with their LA studio. Suddenly, the television channel suffers interference and goes off the air. He leaves the airport and pays a car to take him back to the city. He continues to try to call Sam on the way. He returns to her parents' apartment and explains to them what has happened. They are busy packing and see some fighter planes leaving the city. Tom is packing weapons and says that he is going to drive to Seattle to get his daughter. He wants to know if Will is coming with them. Paula is going to their son's house. Tom drives off with Will in the passenger seat, but the city streets are in gridlock. Cell service and GPS are both not working. People are in panic buying food and fuel. Will fills the car and a gas bottle while Tom goes to buy supplies. Will is approached by a gang who try to rob them, but Tom gets his gun out and scares them off. As they drive away, Will argues that Tom should have told him that he had a gun. But Tom argues that if they'd taken the car, then it would have been game over. The army won't allow them onto the highway, but Tom pleads and a soldier allows him to pass. They continue to drive and notice trains laden with army equipment also heading west. As they drive through the night, they are stopped by a police car. Will gets out to speak to them, but Tom realizes that it is not a real cop. He reverses into the car and they escape. The police car rams them as Tom explains to Will how to shoot the gun. Eventually, they manage to lose him. They continue onwards but swerve to avoid hitting some deer and crash off the side of the road. The police car arrives and the man opens the door demanding that Will gets out, but Tom hits him over the head. Tom thinks that he may have broken his ribs in the crash. They use the police car to tow Tom's car to a garage. The following day, they arrive at a trailer park. Everyone eyes their arrival suspiciously. They meet a kid at the garage called Ricky who can fix the car. They hear voices on the radio asking for help. Tom has a big bruise on his ribs. Ricky explains the problem with the car but says that it could break again. Tom offers to pay her extra to come with them, but she initially refuses. Tom tries to convince her to help him, so she says that she will do it for $2,000. They load the car up with essential repair equipment and then they all drive off. That night, Will notices someone behind them. Tom instructs him to pull over and turn off the lights. As the car passes them, he follows using their lights as a guide. Ricky hands Will a compass and shows him that the needle is spinning. Suddenly, a car drives towards them on the wrong side of the road and is driven off into a ditch. They stop to check and they find that a woman is dead and the man is dying. Tom tells them to return to the car but Ricky is still at the accident site. As they drive past, they see that someone else has stopped. They pick up Ricky and drive away. Later, when they stop for fuel, Will and Ricky talk. They look at the clouds and say that they have never seen anything like this before. Lightning strikes a power pylon and it starts to pour with rain. They drive for a while through the storm but eventually park the car under a bridge for refuge. The next day, the storm has passed and they drive onwards. They get a radio signal which tells them that there is still no cell signal or internet. Will insists on stopping at his friends on the way to get the car checked over. On their way, they are stopped by a roadblock. The sheriff is suspicious but lets them through after Will explains his side. The radio continues to broadcast, speculating if this is an attack by the Chinese or North Koreans. Will arrives at his friend's house and introduces Meg. She hasn't heard from her husband, Adam, for a few days. He was in San Francisco when all this happened. Will showers while Tom fills up water bottles. Meg is really upset that they know nothing. Will tries to reassure that everything will be okay before they leave again. As they drive on, they can see a crashed military jet. 
Ricky speculates that it may have been shot down. They arrive at an abandoned water park and Ricky immediately jumps in for a swim. The water is really hot and they laugh at her. A helicopter then flies overhead. Ricky checks the surrounding cars for fuel and parts while Tom and Will look for food and water. Tom tries to pick up two gas containers but struggles because of his broken ribs. That night while driving, Will hears a buzzing and they check their phones. Tom received a two-day-old voicemail from Samantha saying that she loves him. In the distance, they can see fires and then spot crowds of people walking towards them on foot. Ricky says that they should turn back, but Will says that this is the only way over the pass. A woman stops them saying that she has a flat tire. They try to help, but then a man ambushes them and tries to steal their gas. He demands that Ricky fill their car, then he steals the rest of the fuel. They give chase to try to retrieve it. Ricky is given the gun and shoots the tire which flips the car off the road. They take back the gas, but the man is trapped inside the car and is holding the containers. They struggle to take them from him, and as they leave, the car blows up. Soon after, Ricky insists that they pull over. She is upset because she feels responsible for his death. She regrets coming with them and walks away. Tom tells her to remember that she saved their lives. The following day, they are still parked up. Will calls for Ricky, but there is no answer. He wakes Tom and tells him that she has taken her stuff and gone. They eventually drive on without her. Tom continues coughing. They stop when they notice that a train has stopped in front of them after being hit by something. Will goes to investigate while Tom tries to give himself some medical treatment. He is struggling and says that his lung has collapsed. Will helps him and then drives off while Tom sits in the back. Tom tells Will about how strict his father was, but says that he was still a good man. Will tells him that he loves his daughter and Tom makes him promise that he'll always keep her safe. Will promises and then tells him that Samantha is pregnant. Tom already knew, as Samantha called him after the dinner and informed them. As they bond for the first time, Tom calls him a good man and says that he will be a good father. As night falls, they approach a town and stop to look for help. Will spots lots of abandoned cars on a bridge before they are stopped by a group of people with guns and motorbikes. Will asks them for help for Tom, and they tell him to bring the car forward. Instead, they reverse and are chased by the bikes. He manages to knock the bikes down, but then they are sealed in by two trucks. He drives towards one of them as Tom shoots, and he manages to get past. However, the strain is too much, and Tom dies in the back seat. Will continues onward, but the car breaks down. Will is angry and decides to set the car alight with Tom inside. He carries on by foot and tries to hitchhike. A man stops, gun in hand, and offers to take him as far as he can, but he confiscates his gun as he has family in his truck. The man turns on the radio, but there is nothing. The man explains that no one knows what has happened, but people are being told to go to Canada, something about the air. Will directs them to his dad's house, but there is no one there. He tells the family to rest and to eat. He says that they can stay there and take what they need, including the car in the garage, but he wants to take the truck. The man agrees. Will leaves early the following day. In the distance, he can see a devastated city. He passes a sign that says 30 miles to Seattle. Ash particles are falling from the sky, and he obtains a gas mask from a fire engine. He carries on and exits his vehicle, gun in hand. He climbs a ladder up the side of a building and enters the apartment that he shares with Samantha. It has been half destroyed, but he finds a message written on the wall by Samantha, telling him where to find her. He drives to the address immediately, but is shot at by their neighbor, Jeremiah. Samantha runs out immediately, telling him to stop firing. Will and Samantha embrace. Later, he tells her that her father is dead and that he wouldn't have made it without him. Later, Will wakes up to a rumbling sound. He gets up to investigate. Outside, he can see the northern lights and then see Samantha sat at a campfire with Jeremiah. They explain to Will what happened in Seattle. Jeremiah believes that it wasn't an earthquake. He believes that it was a synchronized event. A nuclear bomb was detonated, and then a virus took down the grid before anyone knew what happened. Will doesn't believe this, and later he checks to make sure that Samantha doesn't either. In the night, Will goes downstairs and spots Jeremiah in his truck. The next morning, Will asks him what he was doing. He says that he saw two kids and thought that maybe they stole something from his truck. Will asks where they are now, and he takes them into the woods to show him. As some deer run by, Jeremiah draws his gun. Will tells him that they are going to leave to go north and asks if he wants to come with them. Jeremiah says that Samantha wants to stay. Will says that he doesn't see any kids, and suddenly Jeremiah turns to shoot at him. However, Will manages to shoot him first. There is a rumbling, and Will runs back to get Samantha. They drive off in the truck as there is a huge explosion behind them. They speed away as the dust cloud approaches. He tells her that this will end and everything is going to be okay. He continues driving and the dust cloud dissipates behind them. 
like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.